Welcome to the Naked Gaming Podcast. Um, it, that was actually genuinely singing. <laughs> <laughs> what was it in tune? I'd like to say it was singing. Oh, so thank you. Oh, thank you. How uh, are you? Yeah, I'm living the dream. Thanks. After a night shift, so it's going to be a great show. See, I feel tired, and I didn't do a night shift, but I had to look after Theo. So that is harder than what I did. I'd say that's harder. It is always. Yeah. It's always like. Would you rather go to work or look after the baby? Everyone I've spoken to say, go to work. That's the rest. That's the real rest. I didn't believe people until I actually had a baby. And now that he's asleep again, we're now working whilst looking after him. So it's like a double whammy. Multitasking, multitasking. So what have we got coming up then? So we're doing a slightly different format this time. Very oh, exciting. Yeah. We've got some game reviews up front and then some news stories. But this, the, the news stories are so good and interesting. I thought we'd talk about them a bit more mm. in depth. Oh, okay. If that's all right. In-depth analysis. Yeah. Okay. News reviews and analysis. I just can't get enough analysis. <laughs> you know that work when they're like, we're going to give you analysis oh, of this. And like, I don't... Does anyone actually <laughs> want analysis? Not really, do they? they just well, want why to... are we doing it on this podcast then? No, but this is, these are, this is fun. <laughs> this is fun news. This is not like news analysis. This is fun news. All right, then. Let's do it. Stop kidding around, Snake. Let's do some games first of all. What do you want? Okay, you can choose. Last of Us 2 Remastered, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, or Golden Sun. Oh, Golden Sun. Okay. I'll go with that. So Golden Sun has been released on the Nintendo Switch Online. And now I'm singing. Um, so it's a game like Pokemon, a little bit. Yeah. Turn-based combat. Yeah. Those pixelated graphics that you know and love. Yes. Um, really this cool is characters. This a retro game, right? That's yeah. been revived, yeah. Yeah, and just like Final Fantasy VII as well. It's those kind of, that kind of genre of mm. game. Uh, it was only available on the Game Boy Advance, but now they've re-released it for the Switch as long as you've got their online expansion pass thing. So it's basically free if you already paid for that. Okay, okay. It was my favourite childhood game probably of all time. Well, this is right. How did I bypass this one? Because I had a Game Boy. Did you have a Game Boy Advance, though? Hang on a second. You're going to have to Google the Hang Golden Sun second. now. Because I had the big brick yellow one. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't have this one. You see, I had the big, the original big the, yellow one. Well, yeah, the chunky one. Yeah, and then I had the Game Boy Colour. Yeah. And then and then I stopped then. Ah, oh, you see, so you would have missed out on this. My sister, in fact, my sister didn't have the advance either. She went straight to the SP. So we, we all, that's why I never played it. Anyway, sorry, carry on. So the SP would have played this, so your sister might oh, okay. have possibly been able to. But there were two games. There's Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age. Weirdly, I was super excited to see that they were on the list of games that were coming out for the Switch. You know, the remasters that they do, like Mario and all that. But what even I was like, is there enough demand for this game? Because you're like, what is this game? I can't remember. I don't know how many people <laughs> are clamouring for Golden Sun to be re-released. Mm. And what's disappointing about it is that it's literally no upgrades to the game in any way. Oh, wow. Does it even look the same? It looks identical. But the problem is you're playing it on a bigger screen, so the pixels look even more massive. Yeah, what's this little man? Is it a man? It looks like a little ginger man that's holding some sort of sword. I mean, you've got it. Oh, is it right? Oh, yeah. well, okay. Yeah. And then there looks like an evil man without a face. I mean, very much the case, yeah. So you okay. are getting... So the pixelated graphics are actually and doing a, their and job. And a blonde chick that's like waving at him saying, hello. Yeah, she does a bit of the old magic. All right. <laughs> so the problem with this... Like, you know, we did Super Mario RPG where they did that the classic game, but they redid it with modern graphics yes. and had all the upgrades and all that. Yeah. They've just literally... I don't know why it's taken so long to release, because it could have just copied and pasted the whole game and put it out on an emulator. They could have actually included it in the... Um, is it on the Switch that you had, like, 64 uh, yeah. retro games? Yeah. Golden yeah. Axe? And I'm surprised it wasn't on that list, to be totally honest with you. But it's out now. Like I said, I don't know if there's the, the clamour that people calling for this kind of thing. It's not like a Mario or a Sonic where you think that's worth remastering. I don't... I just found it hard to get back into, because I've just finished playing Sea of Stars which is a game that's inspired by this sort of original genre, but it's so much better with updated graphics and updated combat and all this stuff. So now so it's, to go So what backwards, you're saying is it's too retro. It needed to be updated or upgraded in some way. Okay, what would you give it out of 10? Uh, it's my favourite game ever from my childhood, but it's got to be like a three nowadays. Oh, it's just not it's cutting it. it. Too much text and speech in it as well. Boo. I was actually really bored. <laughs> Right, two more choices. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, or The Last of Us 2 Remastered. Last of Us 2. Okay. 
I don't know what happened. I was supposed to take her to the Fireflies and walk away. Because of her, they were actually going to make a cure. The only catch. Sweet Jesus. Doctor! What are you doing in here? They would kill her. I should do a seven-minute cutscene for you now, where I where I explain everything about it. Now you played The Last of Us yeah. Part Two yeah. a little bit. Yeah, um, I liked it. It was incredible graphics. Yeah, the story is amazing. I'm 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 expecting to be blown away by the remastered version. So the remastered version is mind blowing. Yeah, because it, I I forgot that this was released during COVID when everyone was at home. Yeah, and it was a game essentially about a zombie virus taking over the world. So it's a little bit awkward timing, um, but. At that time on the PS4, it was one of the best games that there was. Then they had a, a PS5 upgrade that you could get. Now they've redone the whole shebang with better uh, movement. So the motion that the character does is smoother. It runs absolutely rock solidly because the PS5 is so much more powerful. I did the opening uh, cut scene again, the opening bit of gameplay where you ride a horse through the forest. Oh, yeah. I just had forgotten how good it was. Why do game developers release remastered versions is it because they didn't quite finish it in time and thought oh but hang on right you know when we release this game it's good but wait till you see this one because we've had a bit longer to work on it well also we didn't have the technology but now we've got a more powerful machine that will play it right i think there's a bit of that i got annoyed when i first found out this was coming out because i went hang on didn't that come out last year and then i realized it had come out three and a half years ago so yeah. okay they didn't have the ps5 but they, they did they've done this before with the last of us part one they release it and then they remastered it, and you got to pay ten quid for the upgrade. And you sort of so think, is it just a money making scheme? Well, maybe they're doing it because in twenty years' time they assume that people will still be coming back to play this game and they want the definitive version. Right. Like people have done it with Mass Effect. But what I would say about this is it hasn't been long enough since I no, first played it. I was it. about to say it feels like it's just come out. Right. For, for me to want to go back and I mean, it, look at Golden Sun. They've left it how long? About 20 years, 25 <laughs> years. But the problem with this one is it hasn't been long enough to, to ask me for 10 quid to upgrade it now because I can still remember all the story. Mm. So is there another reason to come back? Well, they've got this new mode in, um, which is uh, like a sort of a roguelike mode where basically you, you deal with waves of zombies and then you go and do missions and stuff, which is fun for about a day. But that's not enough to bring you back to, to playing that mode full time. So... All I would say is if you're going to get this, it's for people who've never played it before. So really, you could just skip the original and just buy the remastered version instead. Yeah, it's odd because I think technically you still can buy the original Last of Us 2 not remastered for for like 30... But why would you do that? Why can't you just like skip that and just get the remastered version? Oh no, version? That's, that is what you do. Nowadays, that's absolutely what you yeah. do. It's 45 quid. Unless you've forgotten the story completely, which I think is unlikely in three and a half years, or you have never played it, it's probably not worth bothering with just now. Okay. Last one, you've got no choice now. Prince of Persia. Go on, the then. The Lost Crown. Go on, I'm not... Okay. Our kingdom is cursed. The prince has been kidnapped and taken to a forbidden land. All hope rests with us, the Immortals, to rescue him and save the Empire. But we weren't prepared for what was coming next. Don't you like Prince of Persia? Do you, so the original Prince of Persia was a really difficult um, platformy style game. Yeah. Well, they call them Metroidvania now, which means it's like a so like the Metroid games the, geek. and like the Castlevania series of games, right. you know. And that one was really difficult, and it was the classic of all time. Then they released Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time, and that was a genre-defining game with you could rewind time and all this. This one is back to the basics of the, the Metroidvania, the jumping up and down the platforms, but obviously with a modern twist. So you've got these massive sword attacks that you can do. You've got a bow and arrow. You can also throw it, which is really cool. And you can block and time your parries and stuff. It's actually pretty cool, I would okay. say. It's a nice, it's a nice time filler in kind of January, February time. If you, if you've, you know, gone through the Christmas rush of games, and there's not really that much out now apart from remastered versions of old games, for something that's new. Oh, okay. This is pretty cool. The, the blocking is a little bit hard to time. Um, and the, there's this overcharged attack, which I kept messing up all the time. So I think there's a bit of a fiddliness with the controls. But to be honest with you, 
it does channel that original Prince of Persia game and it's got those kind of that feeling but it's still not the game everyone wants everyone wants the sequel to the sands of time with the rewinding and the blocking and all that amazing stuff which is coming apparently there's a remaster of that coming but this will tide you over until then however 45 pounds on Whoa. consoles uh, it's on everything but not the steam deck and I was okay. like, really? Because I'm playing all the stuff on the Steam Deck these days. So I was a bit annoyed by that. But anyway. I'm just looking at it now, right? I mean, what are the graphics like? Well, it probably wouldn't have cost Ubisoft that much money to make compared to their normal style of games like Avatar, for example, that we talked about. It's it's an okay looking game. Yeah, I mean... It's fun, though. The graphics are just okay. Like I say, it's a bit of a filler if mm. you've got you know gaming time that you want to spend. And I think it's expensive for how it looks. Yeah. But it is fun. So, you know... What would you give it out of 10? A solid six, you know. Solid six. It fills in the day, if you want. <laughs> it's news time, and normally with the news, we get Lee to do the news, but we're going to yes. discuss the news. Oh, today. it's, it's not all about table. me. Well, it can be. Okay. There's some cool gaming news. There's a lot of, lot of um, things are changing in this sort of gaming landscape, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this story, I think everyone went crazy over. This is the best story ever. Yeah. I'd shuffle my papers, but I, I, I haven't got any papers. You're tap on your laptop. I'll tap on my <laughs> iPhone instead. Now, did you see the story about the teenager who beat Tetris? <gasps> oh, my God! <gasps> I just admire this kid, honestly. I mean... I love that. Right. So this is a teenager from Oklahoma and he's believed to be the first human player. I love to say human player. Human player. Computers have beaten this game. AI is taking over, but the humans are still okay at Tetris. To ever beat Tetris 34 years after its release. That's old, man. The video is really cool because he's obviously been playing for a little while. Um, And I think the way you beat Tetris is you get... uh, nine 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 score yeah. and then the game crashes yeah uh but there's this technique that they are all using where they sort of you get like an old school joystick and then you flick it with your yeah. fingers i've seen and it and that's how i don't it's got a funny um name this technique hyper tapping <laughs> hyper tapping is what it's called i can't think as fast as i can't even do maths that quickly and then they're going oh yeah and get that square in the bottom left corner <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> next one all blah, blah. i just can't blah, blah. i can't do it apparently as well right People only thought there were there were twenty nine levels, but this will he's called, sorry his name is Willis Gibson right? Willis. <laughs> Willis. He reached level one hundred and fifty seven. Yeah, take that everybody else. Hundred and not only is that like that's impressive just by itself. He actually managed to do it in thirty eight minutes. Oh, what? And- thirty eight minutes, man. And apparently he said. Um, Listen to this. He goes, the 13-year-old fell back into his chair, declaring, I'm going to pass out. I can't feel my fingers. (laughs) (laughs) I can't feel my fingers. I can't feel my fingers. He's so excited. But what? what, the the interesting part of this story uh, later on down the line is he did loads of interviews about it. And, you know, off of Sky News, they did an interview with him. uh, And this presenter called Jane Secker said, beating Tetris is not a life goal. To, yeah, to this kid it is. and then they said why don't you go outside a bit more that's horrible that's a bit you know and i felt like saying well this kid's actually achieved something yeah <laughs> like, what have you achieved hey <laughs> reporter she says as a mother i'd step away from the screen go outside and get some fresh air beating tetris is not a life goal i'd, I'd like to know what she thinks when he like earns a million pounds next year yeah. from like playing tetris well these have you seen his tetris glove that he's got <laughs> You know how your dad plays bowls yeah. and he has a bowls glove? Oh, like me when I go play golf. You've got your golf glove. Golf glove, yeah. Well, this kid, golf Willis, club. Willis, <laughs> this Willis has a Tetris club. Honestly, we're not, we haven't had a drink. We just, we've just been up all night. Yeah, it's one of those days today. But anyway, well done, Willis. Well done, Willis. I'm proud of you, Willis. That reporter can. Adorken! Without looking at this next article, although I know you know what it is. <laughs> Too late. Maintain the illusion. What do you think the best-selling game of last year was in the UK? Now, I would not have expected it to be this one. Maybe Starfield, the big Bethesda game that everyone's been waiting for, you know, from the people who made Fallout and Skyrim and all that stuff. No. Baldur's Gate? You would have think Baldur's Gate because it won all the awards. Legend of Zelda? Oh, yeah. Marvel Spider-Man 2? No. Ah. It it was, (laughs) in fact, EA FC 24. EA Sport is in the game. 
I, it annoys me that they release it with 24 when they release it in 23. Mm. <laughs> it's annoying. Anyway. Football so, then. This, yeah. Oh. Well, our friend Drew oh. miller Heinemann, who reviews FIFA every year for us, will be pleased. But this is interesting because this was the first football game that FIFA were not involved in the branding of. Uh-huh. So, so EA, who made the game, well... <laughs> Sorry, did that come out of my mouth? <laughs> so basically FIFA said we want... I think it was a billion dollars yeah, for you I to use this. FIFA yeah. in the title. And they just went, yeah, it's all right, no thanks. <laughs> and have gone and sold the most copies of any game in the wow, UK. Wow, that's so, called redemption. Uh, yeah, which is pretty good. Do you know how many copies, though? 200 million. Well, that would be amazing. It's 2.25 million. <laughs> 200 million would be four times the population of the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got four copies. Mass is not my strong suit. <laughs> Stick to... <laughs> Playing games. Playing games. Uh, but I just think that's incredible. It's, it's... That's really cool. Well I, done think, I just... So many people love football. Just not us. Just not us. Hello. Hello. Follow me. Okay. Now, I can't believe this next story. Now, when, when you were younger... About 100 years ago. Yeah. Where did you used to get your games, honestly? Well, there was only two places. Go on. HMV yeah. and game. Right. For me, because I was extremely poor and could not afford to go to HMV, I w- always went to game. Or is it CX? CX? Yeah, I yeah. knew you were going to say CX. Yeah. I, never, I don't think I ever had a brand new game. I always got it. But there was no need to in those second days. Secondhand. I remember actually going to CX and getting... Do you remember Gex? Yeah. Oh, I love that game there. But anyway, I used to always go there and get all my games. And now, right, apparently, I'm so angry at this, right? <laughs> game has confirmed it's actually going to stop selling pre-owned video games. I mean, that was how I afforded Why? all of all of the games of my childhood were... What's the point of having game? What are they going well, to sell? Just no, new games? So a lot of people are saying that CEX, who are the other kind of main trading company, have basically been handed the monopoly of sure. trading games. Because yeah. a game used to give you points in store, and then you could trade that for your games, whereas CEX always like gave yeah. you money if yeah. you wanted it, or points in store. Um, but that was the way I afforded yeah, most but, of my yeah. games. They were 30 quid, 40 quid when it I was, was growing two, up. It was like 35 quid for a brand new game, or you could go to CEX, wait a month or two, and get it for £7. Even what you could do with games was that if it was a brand new game, 35 quid, you could bring in four of your old games and you could get it for free by trading I just, them in. I, so what's the reason for this? Well, they just think that there's not a market for there. There is. Uh, there anymore. There is. <laughs> there, oh, but, yeah, but you say that, but when did you last buy a physical game? Honestly. Um, and that's the point, isn't it? You know, you it's don't, all do online. you? online. You, do da- you download your games digitally. So hang on, now. what do they sell then? Well, they sell, <laughs> they sell discs, but you just can't trade them in anymore. I just don't see the point, to be honest. I think games should just... You know what? If the, if there's no need for physical games, then there's no need for a physical shop. So game, why don't you just become an online shop? <laughs> I kind of, I kind of agree with you. Save your money on rent. I do. I kind of agree with you, to be honest with you. But what is the... So if they say nobody buys pre-owned games, right, then no one's going to buy actual physical games. So what's the point in being yeah. on the high street? And a lot of people do like a physical game more than the online download. And the reason being is that... You have a, 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 such a limited memory, even if you have a terabyte of memory yeah. on your console. That's about five games these days. Yeah. Whereas with the CDs, you just put them in and they play. Like, I know a lot of kids that still get physical copies because mums and dads don't really want them buying them online. Right. So where It limits they? that in a good way. Right. Anyway, I am furious about this. Well, that's all right. CX is still going, but that's it now. Right. We're going there this weekend. <laughs> Do you remember when um, there was the Grand Theft Auto 6 hack yes. and they released all the gameplay and then Rockstar had to go, ah, oh, man, let's release a trailer because otherwise yeah. these random hackers are controlling how we tell people about the I game remember. rather than us. Yeah. It's, it's happened again. Oh, man. Why do, why do hackers do this? Are they just spoiling the fun for everyone? So this is um, a, a developer that you probably know loads of their games called Insomniac yeah. uh, that's owned by Sony. Uh, they've made, uh, I mean, the inc- list of incredible games uh, in their past. You know, uh, Spider-Man, for example. Uh, they did Spyro the Dragon. <gasps> I mean, back in the day. My face. You know, they've done some absolute classics. They've done Ratchet and Clank. All those kind of things. The Spider-Man 2 game that was released last year. One of our uh, top rated games of the year. 
Uh, they've been hacked and they were saying that they wanted $2 million, these hackers, to keep lots of information private from people who work there, but also footage of upcoming games. And, and oh, the one that everyone was super excited about, which was sort of hacked and released a little bit, was a game called Wolverine, yeah. which is, you know, yeah. based on the Marvel character. And I just feel, really feel for the company because, yeah. you, you know... put all that time and effort in, you've got all those game developers, all those, you know, animation artists, and then literally someone just comes along and says, you are this do this or we 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 you know show the world it already yeah and it, w- the way they did it apparently it, it is very very complicated but it involves going into some hotel and hacking into the network and then locking all the files and then saying basically give us the money or we'll re- release them all that's something out of a movie but what i don't get is when they say give us all the money if you did give them all the money there's no they still could yeah. release it all anyway yeah. so i just don't yeah. understand why would they think that anyone would pay because I mean, you're not going to do it are you because they could just release it anyway. How are you going to trust the hacker who just hacked your system? No, oh, here's loads of money and my bank details. Why not? <laughs> anyway, I think it's just a bit... It spoils it for us, but actually I've managed to avoid watching any of the leaks. And I think that maybe that's the power that we have. Yes, don't watch it, guys. Yeah. Don't give the hackers the power. That's it. There was some cool news in there, wasn't there? Interesting really stuff. Really cool news, yeah, yeah. And some good reviews as well. Hopefully there's a few more games coming out, though, because... It's drying up a bit. Well, remasters are great, but, you know... I like the new stuff, don't you? Yeah, I do. Well, look, if you are playing anything at home and you rate it and you want us to know about it, you can get in touch. Yeah, it's at Naked Gaming Pod on Twitter. And also, if you know where I can buy a PlayStation Portal, because <laughs> oh, they were released on the 15th of November, still are not available still going anywhere. About that? Still not available. I'm, I'm getting no, angry no, about Chris, it now. You can either have your guitar, your new guitar, or a portal. You're not having both. Well, we'll see about that. <clears throat> nope.